Hi, I thought I'd do a uh, short video on uh, a clock kit I bought from eBay. Um, it's a DIY kit, so you have to solder it yourself. Um, the particular kit I bought was a five segment uh, clock display. Um, it has a number of different features and capabilities you can go with. Um, this particular one came from a seller called uh, Buy Here 2011, and it cost the grand total of about just over £10. Um, it can do clock, uh, date and time, well obviously date, date and time, uh, you can also apparently store uh, event dates in there, your birthday, something like that, um, it has a variety of effects, um, I just thought it was a bit of fun to actually give it a go and see what actually it came out like. Um, now this is actually a surface mount kit, um, so which is going to be quite an interesting challenge because I've not actually tried anything with surface mount, I mean the pads aren't too bad, I mean even the, the, the IC here isn't the tracks aren't or the pads aren't too small so hopefully it should be okay um, but it's a bit of a bit of an experiment um, what will make this quite interesting or what will make it quite interesting if you actually buy this sort of kit is that uh, most of the sellers or none of the sellers on ebay i found this at uh, and on quite a few actually gave you any instructions and the kit does not come with any instructions so you basically have a load of things on the silk screen like r1 r2 etc and just a set of surface mount resistors or transistors and leds and you're left with trying to work out well where do i put each of these uh, after a bit of hunting around and it is quite difficult that you find the uh, the actual sort of circuit from this one uh, i did actually find some instructions on banggood and i will put a link to that uh, set of instructions actually on the video um, i'll also put a list of the resistor values against the silkscreen values um, in the description below because yeah, that video link might get taken down at some point so I thought it might be useful. So what we've got in the kit, well, we've got a circuit board, um, there's some Perspex backing in front, now these are actually are transparent but they've actually got a protective coating at the moment so you can actually then put that. There are the five LED segments which are five by uh, seven by the and I think I've got this one in red. Uh, you can get lots of different colours. I think you can get blue, uh, white, green. But I thought if I was going to use it as a, a clock at night, then red was probably the best. It's got spacers just to keep uh, the front screens away from the actual uh, LED blocks. And then you've got your set of components, uh, which includes a battery backup holder, uh, the IC that is the clock chip. Um, I can't watch what it actually was based on though. Um, I can probably find it. Oh, the DS3231. Uh, um, there's also a little uh, speaker. There's an LDR. Um, so obviously it can, you, you can do various things with it, uh, sort of dimming at night. Um, and so the mounting screws and all the other device, all the components. So, yeah, I think I'll give it a go and see how it turns out. Okay, the first uh, devices we're going to put down on here are the three ICs, which are U1, U2 and U3. Um, so I've got those here. I've got uh, U3, uh, U2 out. Um, I'll do that one first because it is uh, the biggest and you know, just get a bit of practice in. Um, I've got this on and I'm heated up and I've got a pretty small tip on this one. So I hope that'll be okay for doing the fine ones. Um, I'll have to see if it's going to be work for uh, this bigger U2 because uh, it's got a fairly big pad. So I'm just going to bring this guy into place. I'm going to just um, just get a bit of solder on that main pad and just stick him down for now. And then I can do the other pads. And I'll reflow that top one. Like I say, I might need to actually go for the slightly bigger tip for this particular device, um, given it's actually quite. No, it's not done. It's not. Uh, this is actually too fine a tip on this one, and it's not actually getting the. Yeah, we're not. We're not. Can't quite get enough heat down to the actual pads. I'm just gonna. 
Pause moment, and I'm going to put the bigger tip on for this. Okay, got the got the bigger tip on there. So this should allow us to get a bit more heat onto this actual device. And the pad, because it has got quite a large uh, pad at the back there. So if we put them back in place. Okay, that's just got them initially tacked down. So we'll do the other pads at the front here. I might actually use this slightly thicker solder for this. That's that one done. One. So that looks quite nice. So I'll do uh, redo the one at the back. That's better. Okay, so that's that's that one put on. I think that looks reasonable. So maybe we'll go for U3 next, which is a slightly again a fairly uh, fairly big. Um, Pin device, so we'll get that out of its uh, little protective static packaging. Now, for this one, the, the reason was fairly obvious because it was a three pin device, um, and you could tell which the orientation was. Uh, this one's got the uh, spot indicating pin one down here, so that means that we need to have the, uh, the notch, which is on the IC, which is at this end here, effectively aligned down there. So that looks pretty much aligned to me. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully solder down one pin on the corner. So check it's aligned. If we need to, we can reflow it and just uh, redo its alignment. Now let's pick one I can actually easily get to. I'll just have to turn the board around here a bit. Oh, the devil's moving. So that's yep, that's got him just just tap down on that one pin. There's still a little bit of movement, but that's okay. Just check the alignment. That's pretty good actually. So we're going to do this top top corner pin here, just so we've got effectively two on the diagonal. Got it. I've got it. And I'll go around the other pins and do those. There. Not making a good job of this. Look, I'm gonna put a bit of a bridge on the actual solder there. There we go. Let's put that. Maybe this is actually where the finer tip. Come back to the finer tip would actually make life a little bit easier. Right. Have a quick look at that, and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so we're now going to move on to uh, U1, which is uh, this guy here. Again, there's a spot on uh, the silk screen, which should line up with the uh, spot on the actual chip itself. Uh, ignore the other two spots on the other two corners; they're just uh, manufacturing. Uh, so we're going to align this uh, little guy up. 
Um, this is probably a little bit finer pitch than the other one, um, which will make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm just going to get uh, my little helping hand, which is which a little mirror, so not mirror, um, lens, um, just to make this a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. Um, so try and get the alignment fairly reasonable to start with. That's pretty close. Again, what we'll do is we'll uh, just do one, one pin initially. Um, now I did actually go back and I put the finer tip on this sort of Well, I'm hoping that will help. That's actually okay. That's that's got that one corner. So again, we can go back um, and just check that in a bit. Um, now, what I have done on this is I have actually uh, put a little bit of flux on the pads and a little bit of flux on uh, the actual pins. The device just to make it a bit easier. Okay, that's what that was pinned, that's that stuck. Yep, so he's not moving now. So it's just a case of going around all the pins now and just uh, flying the solder on them. All right, so I'm going to just check check those out, make sure there's no pins uh, bridged, and we'll see how that goes. Back in the road. Okay, I'm going to do. I've got all the ICs in now. Um, I removed the the solder bridge I had. Um, I've got some quite fine uh, solder desoldering braid, which worked quite nicely. And just refurb a few pads. Um, so next we're going to do the LEDs. Um, now the LEDs on here, uh, there are two. Uh, the, well, the, the two pads are slightly different shaped. There's uh, there's a square pad at one end and a bit sort of a, a rounded end pad at the other. Now the rounded end pad actually wants to have the um, cathode of the LED soldered to it. Um, now given that these things are very, very, very tiny. Um, it's actually quite difficult to work out which the cathode end, cathode end is. Um, I don't think I'll be able to actually uh, show you on the camera because it won't focus that closely. Um, but if you have something like a pair of uh, jewelers um, sort of glasses like these, then if you look carefully at the actual um, LED. What you should see is an end with a slight sort of green tip to it. Um, I now nah, there's, there's no chance we're we'll going to see this. Um, I might be able to do it with. Huh. Uh, no, can't actually quite see that. Um, but there is an end with a green tip, and that wants to basically go um, on the sort of non-squared pad. Um, 
Um, so I'm just going to try and get this one. I'm just going to check which way around I've got the orientation at the moment. Okay, so I've got the green tip of that one is that way around. Um, now this is actually going to be quite quite tricky. We just move them into place. Pushing forward just a little bit. Nope, ah, oh, dip. This has not changed orientation, so the green, green is that way still. What we may have to do is uh, blow a bit of solder on the on the pad, and then do a bit of realignment. Slightly moved him. The surface tension of the solder. So it sort of achieved what I wanted, which was to actually stick the one end. There we go. So we're going to do the other end. We can reflare that first end just to make sure it's actually caught properly. That's nice. Yep, got that. So what you saw there was that as soon as you, you flow the solder on the one end, <coughs> the surface tension of the solder sort of pulls the LED out of place. Uh, we've got another LED at this end. And again, I can't so easily see, but uh, this end, this pad here is the sort of the, uh, the slightly rounded pad. So that's going to be uh, the the green end or the cathode end of the LED. So if I get my next one out, um, I'm just going to check which way around that's orientated. Okay, so we want to put him that way. So again, the same is going to happen as soon as we flow some solder on that, it's going to Effectively walk its way across the pad. Oh, didn't do it that time. Oh, that's because it didn't actually stick it down. Let's go back to my cut off bit of solder, things like this. Okay, let's, let's solder that one. So we're just going to slightly move them back to the center. Solder the other end, and then we can. We flow the first end just to make sure it is actually okay. So I think that's actually only got two LEDs. They give you a third in the pack just in case you need it. Um, these things are stupidly small, so. Yeah, so I think that if you sneeze, um, it's probably across the floor. So next we're going to do <coughs> resistors. So we've got R8, 7, 6 and 5. Oh, sorry, R8, 7 and 6 there. Um, those ones are the 10K resistors. And so I'll get those put in place. In fact, the R3... So let me find them for you. R3, which is here. R4. R5. R6 and R7 are all 10K resistors. So we'll do all those ones first. Um, R8 is a 2K. 
and I think R1 and R2 are 1 meg. So we might do the 1 meg ones first, so let's just let's find those in the pack. Now you should be defining resistors fairly easily. They, they will have um, uh, actually on the actual parts themselves. Again, you, you're not going to be able to see this with the, the camera. They will have the actual size uh, imprinted actually on the actual uh, resistor itself. So those ones are my 2K2s. Uh, these are 105, so it's got three 105s. That'll be one, <coughs> one zero, and then five zeros. So that'll be the uh, 10k. Uh, no, sorry, one meg. Sorry, one zero and five zeros. That'll be the one meg. So those will be our one and our two here. So we do those two first. Again, they've actually supplied three uh, resistors here. I'm not, I'm not quite sure why they. They've done that because actually I think one of the other resistors they've just supplied the exact number you actually need. So these are again stupidly small. Um, well, that serves me right for doing a surface mount project. So again. Uh, these don't matter which range you put them, obviously, they're being resistors. Um, if you are particularly inclined, you can put them a particular way around. Um, so go with whatever you fancy if you want everything to be sort of neat. Yep, thought that would happen. Okay, well, I've managed to get a little bit of solder on the pad, so actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Use that as a means to initially stick them down. Okay, that's fairly well aligned. Literally, as the solder is melted, you just have to keep you know, gently nudging him, and then just take take it away carefully when you're done. Add down that end. That's reflowed that end, so that should be fine. <coughs> so that was our one. We get the next little surface mount one for our two out. There we go. Now I do it the same way as I did the last one. I'm going to turn around that way. Like I say, you don't need to. So, like I say, what I'm going to do this time, it didn't work last time fairly reasonably, I'm just going to just wet that one pad with a bit of solder and then just move the LED into, uh, sorry, the resistor into place on that pad and just warm them up at that end. Quite as in line as I like it. Oops. Oh, little blight has fallen over. Okay, it's not too bad. And we'll just solder the other end. And we'll reflow the first end. That doesn't look too bad. So then R3 to R7 are the 10K ones, so that'll be this pack here. 
because if I just check, they are 103, so that's 1, 0, and then 3 zeros. OK. Okay, <coughs> the last resistor there is R8, which is a 2K2. So uh, that's from a pack of 2K2s. Uh, I've just got two of these. Um, and I think that is the last, is that the last resistor. Okay, and we'll just knock him out onto the actual PCB. Just Wet one of the pads. Just gonna open the solder. Turn around that way. Stop my hand shaking. I can then just solder them in. So yeah, apart from the the ICs or the the little square guy, um, where you know got a couple of tracks, just just pins, uh, just a bridge with some solder. It's just not been too bad doing this as a, as a surface mount thing. <coughs> okay, we're going to do the capacitors next. Um, there are three of these on the board. Um, three, yep. Uh, C5, C4, and C2. Um, they're all the same. They're all 100 nanofarads. Um, and again, there's a little pack of them being supplied. Uh, they actually in supplies three, so be careful when you open them, so they don't ping off on the floor. Okay, there's three of them. And these don't have a don't have a way up either, so it doesn't actually matter um, which way you do these. Again, I'm going to do the same as I did before the resistors. I'm just going to tin a pad and then move it into place. I'm just going to go around and tin all those pads so I can do all of them sort of in one fell swoop. Okay, let's call that one. Okay. <coughs> so now we've done that. We've got a little device called Q1. Not that short Q1 is, I suspect it's probably a transistor. Um, so we'll find that in the pack. Yep, there you go. There's a in fact, there's two of them. I could only see one. So I think again they've given you a spare. This one just in case. So there we go. Uh, then you can see that. 
a three pin transistor I'm guessing so I'm going to put him here on Q1 right, so let's just make sure we've got the right way up yep. so I'm going to do the same as before I'm just going to do the top pad move it into place and then move over two and then reflow the first pad try and keep the Try and keep the amount of heat on this down to a minimum. Okay. The problem with using fairly fine nosed uh, tweezers is that sometimes you, know, you, you hold it hold it quite tightly and if it's not quite aligned, it can ping off accelerate itself across the room. So next we're going to solder the, <coughs> the microphone. Which is the metal can here. Now what we need to do is we need to get the right uh, the right uh, hole for this one to go into. So they're actually it is actually uh, it does have sort of handing on it. Um, so again, the the mic pad here has got one round pad and one square pad. And what we need to do is actually put the let me show you. Um, This lead here, which is just so slightly longer than the other one, is going to go into the round pad hole. This is a uh, just normal through hole device. So this should be relatively easy to solder. Check that's seated, which it looks like it is. And I can just jump two wires off the back of that. Next, we're going to do the USB socket, which can be used to power this thing. And the USB socket goes into this set of pins here. Now the orientation of this should be fairly obvious because there are effectively two rows of pins. I'll still lay that like that. <coughs> I'm going to do uh, one of the screens first. So I'm going to do, do one of the pins first and just check that the alignment is fairly good. That was good. I 
that solder. Then do two screening lugs, which we'll see how well this goes because I've got uh, so I've got a fairly small tip on the soldering iron. And that's which is quite a large. Uh, quite a large metal lug that one, so it may not work. That worked all right. Just need to keep the iron on there for a little bit longer than you would normally. Just get the heat transferred through. Um, this will depend a bit on you know, the size of the tip you're using and everything, so. Quite got. There we go. Haven't quite got good contact on that. So that's looking nice. So we uh, attach the the buzzer. Which is this guy. Now this is actually going to get soldered on uh, the other side of the circuit board uh, and the buzzer is actually going to go at this end. Um, the buzzer is actually labelled on the Uh, the PCB, or sorry, not the PCB, but is labelled again on the PCB. We've got a square pad and a round pad, um, and by the look of it, if you look on the back, you probably can't see it from this, um, but the two pins are actually labelled, positive and negative. But look at that, we should be putting the positive in the square pad. Oh, let's just check that again. Uh, these, these pins have been slightly bent in transit, so let's just put them back. Yep. So again, we're just going to turn it over. Solder that. Okay, that's good. <coughs> There's also a couple of capacitors on the back, sort of, uh, this would be electrolytics by the look of it. <coughs> uh, there's a 220 microfarad, which, let's have a quick look, is the bigger of the two, and there's a uh, what's this one? There's a 10 microfarad, which is the slightly smaller of the two. So now C3, which is this guy up here, is the 10 microfarad. So let's do him. And this is, let's say, it's a surface mount uh, on cam. Now we want the the black band, which is at this end, to actually be where the black band is marked on the silk screen at this end. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get there's there's one pad one of the pads sticks out quite a bit at one end. Now we're going to get him. Uh, solder down first. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of solder on that. 
a bit of salt on that pad. We'll bring back to place the little capacitor. Turn around a bit. Not a little bit uh, off. We can. Oh, no. oh, that, that didn't, um, didn't quite didn't quite stick. Yeah, yeah, that's good in that time. Let's have a quick check under my little um oh, yep. Yeah. So then we're gonna just sum the other end. Let's prop that up on the Okay, so I finally got the uh, little electrolytic capacitor uh, soldered on. Um, I had to put the bigger tip on the soldering iron, it just wasn't, you know, the, the pad's are actually quite big on this. Uh, and with a small tip I was using to do the fine uh, uh, surface mount chips and the LEDs and things, it just wasn't getting enough heat into the actual thing. Um, so that one's now done. And on to the second one, which is going to go here. So this is a, a 220 nanofarad. And so we'll put that on there. Now we can probably align this one up and actually probably what I'll do is I'll tin the first pad, uh, tin the one of the contacts, uh, let's get down a bit, tin one of the contacts actually on the uh, capacitor itself and then that should uh, allow us to tack it down and then we can actually salt that pad again, reflow it. So if we do... That and get sold onto the pad. That's nice. Now this is actually again bigger pads, bigger can, so I need a little bit more heat on this, but obviously being careful not to cook the capacitor. Mm -hmm. Move the soldering iron lead a bit. So we get that on there. These are actually done by hand, this. Okay, that one's flowed. A little bit off centre, so we'll just move that a bit across. That's quite reasonable. So then we can flow fresh solder on this pad and then we'll reflow this one again with a bit more solder just to make sure that's nicely stuck that's looking good okay there's a couple more items to go on this side of the board there's the uh, the battery holder um, this one is a, uh, I think it's a CR1220, it's, it's a bit of a smaller one but that's not too bad. Um, so that goes on this pad here, again the silk screen sort of uh, directions with this. And this has actually got a couple of little placement lugs in the bottom, so this actually can be put directly on there. And that should hold there while um, actually get the, the solder on it. So don't need to sort of tack one end and then reflow it. Now obviously this is quite a big component, so this will definitely need a little bit more heat than some of the other things. Oh, 
that's that one. We'll do the other side. Again, get the pad nice and warm. That's good. And the last component on this side before we can actually do a little bit of initial testing of this is the light dependent resistor, which is going to go here. And the way they sort of show this actually being fitted in the manual is we're actually going to have it sort of pointing outwards that way. So the probably the easiest thing to do with this is just to partly is put it through the two through holes. Um, and then so I just bend it over so it's sort of pointing the other way. I might actually do that with a just with a pair of pliers actually, just so we're not stressing the leads next to uh, the actual device itself. I don't believe this has got a orientation. So if we just put a little pair of pliers there, we can sort of then bend the leads over so we're not stressing the leads close to the body. And then we can actually put that through there. That sits nice that way. So I'll solder one of these, see how its sort of alignment is, and I'll do the other one. So that looks pretty good. Do the other lead, and then we can just crop those uh, the leads off a bit. Straighten the resistor of the solder a bit. That looks good. So just get the snips in. Okay, so what we can do now, we can actually power this up, um, do some initial checking of it. Uh, that's what the manual says that we should get some response from the buzzer and the LEDs. So I'm just going to grab a power bank. So I've just got a little power bank, get the USB lead, and we'll plug it in and see what happens. Oh, that's a good start. I'll just show you that again. So if I just plug this in, okay, the two LEDs have, have lit and the buzzer sounded. Um, we've actually we've also do. Uh, not quite sure which way yet. So the two touch pads are here and on this side. And that seems to be responding nicely. Okay, that seems like it's working okay. So I'll um next things to do will be the big LED matrix is onto the side of the board. So I'll just pause a moment and I shall just get that set up ready to do. Okay, so we've got all the LED matrix ready. Uh, some of these are actually uh, stuck together with a single piece of film across the top. You can just cut them, It'll just make it a little bit easier to actually solder them on individually. Uh, you probably also check the pin alignments because because they've only been set in piece of polystyrene for the shipping um, and so the pins may have got a little bit bent in shipping and we'll get through the holes. Now it does say that you want to uh, the end with the uh, writing on wants to go at the silk screen labelled end um, so I guess these guys are actually uh, handed with the LEDs inside so if we just align these up uh, we might need to just adjust a couple of the pins if they don't go in 
easily. Okay, that's going all right. And what you're saying in the manual is make sure that these are soldered as close to the board as possible. Um, so then the uh, the two bits of perspex can go over the top. So you might just need to put something underneath this uh, as you solder it, just to keep it actually up a bit. So um, I've got a little, little booklet here I'm going to put underneath, just to make sure that it's it's pressing down on that. Um, just be something at the other end as well. And then just a case of soldering each of the leads on, and then I'll be able to crop them. So if we go for each of these. Uh, where do I put my solder? Oh, there we go. So again, I'm just going to do one, one lead at a time. Um, do that one, and then just one up this corner. Then just check that it's nice and aligned close to the thing. That's the actual circuit board, and then we can do all the other ones. So I'll just turn this around so you can see it a bit better. That's nice. Now, what I might do just before I uh, actually do the next one is just check that all still works. And there we go, we've got a line of LEDs lit. So that would seem to suggest that I've got that in the right way around, so the manual is right about having uh, the sort of the, the number on that side or towards the actual uh, the silk screen. Oh, where's that gone? Uh, the silk screen actual number, which actually is now underneath that one, but there you go, there's L2 on this one. So we'll put another one in. Again, it's labeled there. Just check the pins on this one. And then another one. Oh, that's good. I'm just going to give that a quick check to make sure they all look pretty reasonable. Yep, they look fine. <clears throat> so we now just need to trim off uh, the pins on these just so the backing can fit. And of course, I think it probably would anyway because they're a lot lower down than the other things. But actually, actually that, to say that, actually the um, uh, the microphone, actually there's a hole, um, that right. there's a hole in the actual back anyway, so that would go over there. So we do actually want to cut those leads down fairly close to the circuit board. stuck to the, uh, the flux. Um, I do actually have some flux remover which I might put over the back of this um, when I'm finished. Put my box back. So next thing is to basically install the acrylic panels. That's all the components done. Um, so all we've really got left now in the, in the component bag are things like the bolts that go through. Um, there should be a couple of bolts in here and 
couple on that. Oh, that's actually four bolts. Get the nuts out. And then we've got the four, or the, the two end posts, um, which you want to take off the protective film at this stage. That should just peel off. Let's put clear perspex. We'll do it on this one as well. Might just have to push out uh, the punchings there. It's been still in the actual. Still in the things. Oh, that one, that one already punched out, so that's okay. Then we got the front and the back panels. The back one's sort of a, a smoked black one, and the front will be clear. Uh, we'll take the actual uh, stuff off it, and there's another panel there. Before I do that, I'm actually just going to go and uh, clean the solder resist off this, and also take, again, the film off the front of the LED matrix displays. Um, and I'll be back with you shortly on that one. Okay, I'm glad I paused a moment while I actually... Um, uh, took the, the, the film off that protective film. Uh, took an awful long time to get off these items. Um, comes off the one side fine, it's really difficult to get off the other side. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is uh, there are these sort of spacers here, which we put on either side. And then on the front goes the sort of the smoked black panel. Um, so, we can put Cut the bolts through. I don't think actually they're technically going to set screws, but that's not ah oh, okay. A slight problem. The LDR is slightly the the length I put on it is a little bit too long, and it's actually just stopping that bit going in, okay, so I might just be able to just push him back a bit. That should do it. There we go. Typically while doing that one, this other end is falling out. On the other side, there is a spacer that's got quite a few cutouts that's going to go effectively over uh, and just uh, get a bit of spacing from the actual leads uh, of things like the LEDs. And then finally, we've got a clear one that's going to go over like so. Just put the nuts on. Um, I don't have my little screwdriver at hand, so I'll be back a moment. Just going to get that. Okay, so we've just got a group dual screwdriver, so we can just tighten these up a bit. Just pinch them gently up. It's like too tight. Really, any finger tight, really. That. 
Here's the finished item. So we can plug it in there. And there we have it. Now I'll have to admit I haven't actually looked at the instructions yet on how to, to do this. So at the moment it seems to be cycling through uh, things like time, temperature, uh, this must be the date, Saturday. That's obviously not nice, that's not so nice. Oh, happy. Uh, well, that, that's very nice it to wish me happy birthday. It's not actually my birthday. Um, and then back to the time again. So I might have to figure out actually how you set this up. Oh, that's gone to that one. Yeah, well, I will see how this actually is set up and um, I might be back with you in a moment. Now, when this scrolls, you might see a bit of uh, persistence there. I'm actually not seeing that really. Uh, it's not too bad at all. So, yeah, I will um, see if I can figure out how to actually set this up and might be back to you. Okay, um, so to get this to actually do the various operations, uh, initially to set it up, you need to hold both or touch both of the two uh, controls. Oh, maybe not. There we go. And it just displays time. Um, if you do the effectively arrow one on uh, the, well, depending on which way you're looking at it, uh, the one side of it, you can scroll through the various things you set. So that's alarm. There's time and date, alarm, the font, the display. I haven't actually tried all these. I'm not quite sure what that one is. Uh, the format. Uh, I guess the birthday message. Um, haven't figured out what the show is yet. I'm sure we'll figure that out in a moment. Uh, the speed of the sort of scrolling. Um, uh, move, now not sure. Sound, yeah, we could do turn that off because it's a little bit irritating. Count, so we go for time and then you can press the round size. There we go, so we can now set the time, which is about eight o'clock in the evening. All you could do is turning off that sound, that's very irritating. So that to increment it, you're pressing the, the triangle one, and then to move to the minutes, it's about 46. Okay, this could be quite slow. Yeah, and the LED flash on the back is also quite annoying. <laughs> I don't know if you hold this, it actually. Oh, actually, that one doesn't seem to, if you hold it, it doesn't seem to actually increment automatically. It could just be the way I'm holding it. Okay, so then if we start again. Ah, 35. I don't know what that is. Ah, seconds. So there we go. I don't think I'm, I'm going to be that accurate enough to set this to the seconds. So 8, 46 and 43 seconds. Uh, apparently it's 22 degrees Celsius. I don't know where actually it's getting that temperature from. Uh, that I'm assuming is probably the alarm clock and it's sat and that must be the date. So if we hold both of them again, hopefully, so time, so I want to do the triangle one, so date, let's try and set the date. Uh, it is the 11th of October, um, so that, oh, that will be the year, so that's 2018, that's 2019, uh, let's assume it's day first, nope, it's month first, so there we go, so it only went up to there, so that's October, and we get to 11th. Again, that's that one set. So we hold them again. Let's see what else we can set up. So time, date, alarm, we'll ignore the alarm for now. Font. What have we got font wise? Oh yeah. No, okay, just rounds the letters a bit and rounds the numbers a bit. I think I prefer the fully done one, so I think I'll keep with that one. So let's see what other settings we've got. So time, date, alarm font, 
display. Well, let's see those. Mode two. Mode three. Don't know what that's doing. Well, let's try zero. Oh, oh, okay. So that's just changing how it displays the numbers. So it's just rolling around. Oh, I like that. Um, so sort of thing is that you know you obviously need to set it and then actually try out to see what actually difference it makes. Let's sit down. So alarm. So we can just do this and face the camera. Want display uh, midpoint. I guess that's probably midpoint. Ah, okay. So that's just just basically working out how you want the midpoint to sort of show. Whether it's static or moving, slowly or fast, or just pulsing. So time, date, alarm, font, display, midpoint, uh, format. So what format is. So hour, date, temperature, hour, date. Okay, so I guess that's just what it's going to scroll through. Um, okay, so 24 hours. So select the one you want with the triangle, and then with the round one, you can select whether it's actually think about that. So um, I guess if we do the triangle again, we can put between 24 and this hours. It's a bit annoying that every time you do this, you have to go back around this and press both buttons together. Uh, you want the birthday one. Brig. Okay, what's Brig? Level five. Ooh, sounds like a game. <clears throat> Le ah, brightness level. There we go. May not show, I think it, I think it does quite show quite well there. Um, some of the ADs are, are a lot brighter than others, like the two up here in the A, quite a bit brighter than the ones down the side. Um, obviously just shows they're not particularly well matched. I mean, that that is the same for me as well. It's not just what the camera's picking up. Um, so I might just put that on to, I suspect that's probably automatic. So uh, the LDR, which is, I'm not sure which side the LDR is now. Oh, the LDR is on this side. So I'm guessing that if we were to cover that up, it might then sort of dim on the automatic setting. So we go back to so format, birthday, brightness. What are the things we've got here? Show. Ah, OK, so we can pick the format of we want hours, minutes and seconds in sort of upper lowercase, things like that. We well, just want hours and minutes, but with the AM, PM, um, or just hours and minutes and forget the seconds. We'll go for the hours and minutes and seconds. Let's set that one. So again, every time you want to go back to the main menu, press both the two buttons together. Um, speed, well, I guess that will be the scrolling speed, so I think it's pretty obvious. Move, don't know. Okay, mode three. Ah. Right, okay, well, I think we've covered that one already. So that's just now changed the mode in which the, the digits change. So rather than now them scrolling down as they were before, that's now just sort of uh, almost doing a fade. So I think that's probably covered all of them. Uh, we might just undo the... Let's try the birthday one. Okay, so you can do birthday on or off. Well, I'm going to put that off for now. Um, and maybe figure out how to actually code the birthday in that at some point. Count. Okay, what's count? Oh, countdown timer. Okay, well, yeah, okay. Maybe useful. Let's turn the sound off. Oh, there you go, I've got the sound off. Oh, hmm. Sadly, it's still making a noise. I think the other one that we haven't done yet is the B LED, which I'm assuming is probably the backlight LED. Okay, let's try a different set. Oh, that's on all the time. That I'm presuming is probably off. So that looks like it's just fairly low intensity all the time. It looks a lot brighter than it actually is. They're actually fairly low intensity, these little blue LEDs. Um, that's obviously going to flash every time you do something on it. Um, mode 3. 
that seems to be a bit brighter and that I'm guessing is probably turned off so I might have that on one what else have we got yeah that's it so we covered that one so there we go that's that project finished okay so that that's now with the backlight always on so yeah that was that was quite a nice quite a nice project um the surface mount the uh, surface mount components weren't actually that too bad to do although i would recommend having um either a sort of an eye eyeglass or um, at least uh, a little stand magnifier like one of these sort of things a helping hands with magnifier um, unless you've got particularly good eyesight um, and probably also a fairly fine tip on the soldering iron um, although go back to a much wider tip for when you're soldering some of the bigger components like the sort of the speaker and things like that uh, the buzzer um, because otherwise you just don't get enough heat into the actual pads to actually make it work so um, i hope you've enjoyed that and um yeah um see you, see you at some point in the future thank you for watching